Hello students, this is Amol Ingole and in this video I am going to explain tree diagram also called as code tree. Actually there are three ways in which convolutional encoder can be represented and these three ways are code tree also called as tree diagram, second one is state diagram and the third one is code trellis also called as trellis diagram you can find the output of the encoder by using any of these techniques easily so before we start discussing the tree diagram let's see what is the state of the encoder and to understand the state of the encoder we'll consider one convolution encoder shown on the screen If you see the convolution encoder, you will see that there are two memory units used. There are two outputs and the clock size is 2, 1, 2. The state of the encoder actually depends on the number of memory units. If there are two memory units, then the state of the encoder will be 2 raised to power m. There will be 2 raised to power m possible state of the encoder. Here the number of memory units are 2, so there will be 2 raised to power 2, that is 4 state. And what, what will be these 4 state? These 4 state will be nothing but the different beats that these M1 and M2 are holding. For example, if the M1 and M2, they are holding 0, 0 bit, this will be called as state of the encoder. So how many different possible combinations you can have? You can have 2 raised to power 4 combinations and those combinations will be called as state of the encoder. Right? So for, for this 2 memory unit encoder there will be 4 possible state. Now let us discuss a code tree or a tree diagram. The tree diagram looks like this here <clears throat> this is the initial state of the encoder and when you give input 1 or 0 this 0 and 1 these are nothing but the input beats what will be the next state of the encoder that state of the encoder is written like this and what will be the output of the encoder this okay on the on the top side of this horizontal line output of the encoder written and state of the encoder is written in bracket like this and these are called as the time state or different stages of the tree so this is the first stage this is the second stage sorry this is the second stage this is the third and this is the fourth stage so you have to first draw a structure like this tree structure like this and then after preparation of response table for a given miracle you can fill that tree and you can use that code tree for finding the output of the encoder so let's discuss one numerical uh, a feed forward convolution encoder is is shown below if you construct a code tree encode the input bit stream and show the trace on the code tree for the given input stream the same statement can also be written in the form of generator sequence like this right so the both the both the statements are for the same same numerical the first one is written using the encoder diagram the second one is given in the form of generator sequences so let us solve this numerical. From the statement, you can identify these things. Q, how many number of outputs you have? What is the K? What is the depth of the memory? And, and so on. You can easily identify the state of the encoder. The number of memory units given are m equal to 2. Therefore, there will be 2 raised to power 2. That is 4 state as there are. Two memory units. So these are the four state of the encoder. 
the encoder can have at any instant of time it can it can have any of this state or you can say that the encoder will be in any of these four state at any given instant of time you need to construct a response table like this the response table is is little bit different from the table that we have used in the first numerical based on convolution encoder this is the difference in the first column we will see that the possible input bits are given or written instead of the entire input bit stream the possible input bits will be either 0 or 1 so that's the only difference the rest column are same like the previous table okay the second column is the current state of the encoder third column is next state of the encoder and these are the output v1 and v2 as we have two outputs so there will, there will be v1 and v2 output columns okay. let us fill this response table first so what you have to consider here that the initial state of the encoder is 0 0 so we'll start with the initial state that is 0 0 and we'll give the possible input possible input bit so input bit will be either 0 or 1 for every state you have to consider 0 and 1 as the possible input and then from that input bits you have to first determine the next state of the encoder and find the corresponding v1 and v2 output so let's find this if current state of the encoder is 0 0 and 0 is the input given the next state of the encoder will be this 0 will be shifted in M1, M1 will be shifted in M2 and the next state of the encoder will be 0, 0. So, 0 and 0. This will be the next state. Now, similarly, when the initial state is 0, 0 and input 1 is given, then the next state of the encoder will be 1, 0. So, that can be written like this. Once you have the third column field, you can now go on finding the v1 and v2 equations are already written here and we have already discussed how using this equation the columns can be filled so fill this this column for v1 and v1 is nothing but xoring the input current input bit and the bit stored in m2 so you have to consider this m1 and m2 this is the m2 bit this is the current message bit so 0 xor with 0 the answer will be 0 and in the same way you can find v2 by xoring u m1 and m2 so this is u m1 and m2 and you can you can fill the v2 column so repeat the procedure for input 1 now consider the next state of the encoder Next state of the encoder is 0, 1. Again, for 0, 1, we'll be considering 0 and 1 as the input bit. And you can first fill that next state of the encoder. Next state of the encoder will be 0, 0. And when the input is 1, the next state would be 1, 0. That can be filled. And you can also find out the output v1 and v2 by using this equation. Again, u xor m2 u xor m2 so 0 xor 1 will be 1 and so on you can fill this the next state of the encoder will be 1 0 again you can identify the next state it will be 0 1 when the input is 0 when input is 1 the next state of the encoder will be 1 1 and that can be written like this find out the output and repeat the procedure for state 1 1 this is how you can complete this response table of the given numerical. Now, once you have the response table ready, now you can you can first draw the raw structure of the tree. And how many stages you will have to draw? It depends on how many input, how many bits are there in the input bit stream. So the input bit stream U has four bits in it so you will have to draw a structure with four stages first stage second stage third stage and fourth stage from every stage there will be two branches leaving the tree 
one for the zero input, other for the input with one. From every state, there will be two branches living. One for zero, other for one. Like this, you can you can first prepare a raw structure of the tree, and then using the response table, you can start filling the tree. What you have to fill in this? We will be starting with the initial state zero zero, and at every time interval, when you enter input bit zero or one. You need to identify the next state of the encoder and the output. So the state of the encoder will be written below this line and the output of the encoder will be written on top of this line. And that's how you, you, you have to fill the tree structure. Let's start with, with the initial state 0, 0. When the encoder is in 0, 0 state, and 0 is the input given. Look at this. It is in 0, 0 state and 0 is the input given. The encoder will go to next state and that next state is 0, 0. So, this next state will be written here. When it is in 0, 0 state, input 0 is given. The next state would be 0, 0. And what will be the output? The output will be 0, 0 again. Right? So, there is no change when the state is 0 and input is also 0. Right? So, the output can be written on top of the line like this. And you can, you can repeat the same thing because we have just started for 0, 0. So, here again it is 0, 0 and you can again take input 0 and write the output. Right? Output and the state of the encoder like this. Again, for this time state, you are in 0, 0 state input 0 is given, the next state will be 0, 0 and output will be 0, 0. The same thing will be repeated again here. You are in 0, 0 state, input 0 is given and the next state would be 0, 0 and output will also be 0, 0. Same thing will be repeated in the last time state or last stage here. Right? So, the 0, 0 state is over now with input 0. Now let us take the second row of the response table where you are in still still in the 0, 0 state but this time 1 is the input key. Input bit is 1. So if, if you are in 0, 0 state and input is given as 1, 0, 0 state input given as 1, you will go to 1, 0 state. 0, 0 initial state. 1 input given, next state would be 1, 0 and that will be reflected here. 0 initial state, 1, one input given and next state would be 1, 0 with output 1, 1 and this output 1, 1 will be written here. This is how a tree is filled. Right? So, we are going to repeat the same thing here. You are in 0, 0 state. Input 1 is given, the next state would be 1, 0 with output 1, 1. Again, here we are going to repeat the same thing. You are in 0, 0, input 1 is given, you will be going to next state that is 1, 0 with output 1, 1. And that's how you can fill this. Okay. Now, the state 1, 0 you can discuss now. 1, 0, you are in 1, 0 state. You can, you can, you can actually... Uh, start filling the tree from any branch. You just need to consider the state and the input bit and you have to use the response table to fill this. So, let us discuss. You are in 1, 0 state here at this three places. So, 1, 0 state and input given is 0. So, in which state you will go? Next state would be 0, 1. So, the same thing can be written here. You are in 1, 0 state. 0 input given, you will go to 0, 1 state with output 0, 1 again. That 0, 1 can be written here. Again, you are in 1, 0 state, you are giving 0 input, you will go to 0, 1 state with output 0, 1. Right? In the same way, you can fill the entire structure, tree structure like this. Using the 
response table you have to fill this the output will be written on the top of the line horizontal line and state of the encoder will be written on the bottom side of the line once your tree is ready once your tree is ready now you can use this tree you can use this tree to trace down your output for the given input string I'm taking the same tree now which, which we have prepared just now. This, these are the input bits given. Okay, input bit string given 1010. Let us trace the output. Let us find out the output of this input 1010. So you have to do it like this. You have to start with the initial state 00. But every every time you have to consider that the encoder is in the 0 0 state then take the first bit take the first bit so the first bin input bit is 1 you are in 0 0 state the first input bit is 1 the next state would be 1 0 and what will be the output that output should be written here the output when you give input 1 will be 1 1 so you will be only writing the output encoded output when the input bit is given as 1 okay and now you have to start from where you have picked this output now you are in 1 0 state so you are in 1 0 state and what is the input bit given now it is 0 you are in 1 0 bit 1 0 state and the next input bit is 0 next input bit is 0 you will go to 0 1 state with output 0 1 so that output should be written as 0 1 here this 0 1 is the output when you enter second input bit you have to repeat the same thing starting with the same state 0 1 you have to start with this state you are in 0 1 state and the next input bit is 1 so when you input 1 bit you will go to 1 0 state with output 0 0 right so that 0 0 output should be written here and it is obtained for the third input bit and that is 1 okay now let's enter the last bit of the input bit stream that is 0 okay we reached at this this state from here give 0 input you will go to 0 1 state with output 0 1 right so this will be my the my final output bit right 0 0 this will this is how you can you can find the output for any 4 bit input string because we have drawn this structure for four stages so you can use this for any 4 bit input now the next thing is to show the trace on the tree you can show the trace on the tree just by following the path which you followed to get the output which you followed to get the output. So you can show it like this, where you entered first input bit as 1, you got the output 1, 1, then you gave input 0, got the output 0, 1, then you gave input 1 bit, you got the output 0, 0, next you gave input 0 and got the output as 0, 1. So this is the trace of your output this is the trace of the output and you are supposed to show this on the tree structure when you encode the input and get the output like this thank you